Hi everyone! We heard about this great fireworks show and decided to check it out. It's fantastic! Hey, what do you think of when you see fireworks? The 4th of July? Family? Ball games? Did you know that fireworks were invented in ancient China? It's true! And the gunpowder used in them is actually one of the four great inventions in Chinese history. They all had a major impact on the rest of the world. We'll check those out today, but I gotta let Mia finish the fireworks first. Okay, the fireworks show is over. Let's get started. Our objectives for today are to describe the advancements of Middle Chinese empires, describe their cultural and artistic achievements, and explain how Buddhism and Confucianism coexisted in ancient China. Are you ready, historians? Okay. Remember after the Han Dynasty fell apart, China had a time of chaos called the Three Kingdoms period? The name comes from the three powerful states that rose up battling one another for power. The winner was the Sui. They reunified China as one empire and started a new period of powerful empires, and all of them had a big impact on the nation with their own accomplishments. As the Sui Empire grew bigger and stronger by winning battles, they also kept things running smooth as silk. Get it? With an efficient government that got things done by giving workers specific jobs. It was bureaucracy taken to the next level. And guess what? This part of Chinese history was booming in business with products like these. The Silk Road kept China super rich and well connected with other places. Oh, and do you remember that the Chinese were the first to make paper like we do today? Well, they had another bright idea. They invented paper money! Now put on that thinking cap for a moment. Why would paper money be better than money made from metals? Did you say paper is easier for both buyers and sellers to carry? What about paper being cheaper for the empire to produce than money from gold and silver? Both are terrific answers. You may have had others. Later, something big happened in China. They started a project called the Grand Canal. Imagine digging a giant waterway, a mega project, right? Think of it as the world's oldest and longest water park. Okay, it's not really a water park, but it is filled with water and is super old and super long, stretching over 1,100 miles, the longest in the world. This canal was a big deal for China. It helped move goods and people from the north to the south and played a big part in China's growth. And it tells you a lot about the big advancements in ancient China when the Grand Canal isn't even considered one of the four great inventions. Okay. You know about gunpowder, and you remember that they invented a method to produce paper that is basically still used today. Those are two of the four. Number three is an early version of a printing press. The Chinese used little wooden blocks like these to print on paper. Using these blocks in a printing press was much faster than writing by hand. That really helped spread knowledge and information across the empire. And number four? It's the compass. Pause here a moment to predict why the compass was such a big deal. The compass was a game changer. It allowed explorers to navigate and find their way even in open ocean or dense forests. This tool sparked new discoveries and better trade routes and helped connect the world in ways that had never been possible before. So cool, right? The best example of ancient Chinese art comes from the Tang Dynasty, a colorful explosion of creativity. It left us amazing poems filled with beauty and simplicity, talking about love, nature, and other subjects such as politics. Many are still studied today. 
Tong artists painted lively pictures with bold colors, capturing everything from stunning landscapes to everyday life. Their works still inspire awe. Ceramic artists crafted figurines that looked like animals or magical creatures. These were both stunning decorations and sometimes even religious symbols. And music? Oh yes! The Tang Dynasty was alive with the sounds of unique instruments like the pipa and the dita. Let's listen for a moment. They created an unforgettable sound that is distinctly Chinese and still enjoyed today. Tong fashion was vibrant too, with colorful silk robes and detailed embroidery. Like today, clothes were a way to show off who you were in society. Last but certainly not least, the Tang Dynasty created a feast of flavors. Chefs cooked up amazing dishes with fresh ingredients and tasty spices, like these vegetables and chicken. Many of their cooking methods are still used in Chinese cuisine today. So what do you think about the Tang Dynasty? Yeah, the Tang was a golden era for Chinese culture that we still remember and appreciate today. Now, who's hungry for some Tang Dynasty food? Just as China is noted for delicious food, important inventions, and impressive artwork, there are religious and philosophical beliefs that are connected with the nation. You probably remember learning about Buddhism during our visit to India, and we looked briefly at Confucianism in an earlier lesson. These two really caught on in China during this time, mostly thanks to our old friends the Silk Road and the Grand Canal. So, what do you think? Can Buddhism and Confucianism coexist in China? The answer is a big yes! Let's play a fun game of spot the similarities between Buddhism and Confucianism. Remember, one is a philosophy and the other is a religion, but they've managed to live together for centuries because they have a lot in common. Buddhism is like a guidebook for many to finding spiritual peace and happiness. It teaches us to be good and kind to others. Ever heard of karma? Of course you have. It's part of Buddhist beliefs. Confucianism is a philosophy that offers a moral compass. It wants us to treat others with compassion and respect and build trustworthy relationships. It also respects authority and order. Just like a well-played game of chess, every piece has its role. In a nutshell, both Buddhism and Confucianism are all about good behavior and making the world a better place. They have been guiding Chinese folks and people in other parts of East Asia for centuries, like two best friends on a long journey together. Following the reunification of China, a ton of advancements happened and really had a huge impact on the entire world. In particular, the four great inventions made China the envy of scientists and inventors around the world. Then there was the Grand Canal, which along with the Silk Road really expanded trade and the spread of information and knowledge between civilizations. The Tang Dynasty, called by some the Golden Age of Chinese Art, displayed a rainbow of creativity that is still admired today. Their artistry touched everything from painting to poetry to even cuisine, making this era shine bright in China's artistic history. And Buddhism and Confucianism became a cohesive combo during this period, as both centered on behaviors to make the world a better place. Next time, we wrap up our journey to China by spending some time at its most famous building project. Until then, historians, keep uncovering the past and looking to the future. And remember to always be clever. Hey.